the local member, Michael McCormack, and with uh, the local mayor, and I thank him very much uh, for showing me around. Thank you very much to Kerry Pascoe. Uh, it's been a great opportunity to come along and say hello to the people of Wagga and the Wagga community as it deals with this flood. I've had the opportunity today to be briefed on the flood, to see it from the air, and to meet with so many of the remarkable volunteers who are making such a difference. So can I say very, very clearly to everyone, to the local police, the emergency services workers, the local council personnel, the local SES, all of the people who have volunteered, to everyone who's filled a sandbag, thank you very much for what you've done. To our Australian Defence Force personnel who have done great work filling sandbags and door knocking to help this local community out, thank you very much to you too. This has really been a great effort across the whole community. Uh, what we know now is that the CBD hasn't flooded. Uh, an evacuation order was made and it was the right thing to do to make it. But fortunately the CBD hasn't flooded. But many people have been impacted by this flood, particularly in North Wagga. And these flood waters are going to have an impact right across the region. Now other townships are on alert, Griffith, Forbes, and the waters will make their way through to Victoria and townships there are bracing and obviously feeling the anxiety that comes with waiting for flood waters to hit. As I said this morning in Sydney when I was with Premier Barry O'Farrell, we will be working with the state government and with the local council to keep supporting the local community here. Already in accordance with our natural disaster arrangements, we've triggered assistance, which helps people in hardship, helps them with repairs to their homes, helps primary producers and helps small businesses. We'll keep working with the state government. Uh, they are the ones who make requests of us as a federal government and then we stand ready to respond to those requests. When the flood water subsides, and that's a while yet, we've been talking about the need for pumping and the movement of so much of this water. But when the flood water subsides, then we will be able to count the cost in infrastructure damage. And we will be working with the state government and with the local government to assist with getting infrastructure back in order. We've got long-standing natural disaster arrangements work through those arrangements with this community here. Uh, in Australia, we know that we face these kind of disasters only too often. We're a nation who over the last two years has seen so much hardship caused by flood waters. Now we're seeing that hardship here, but whenever we see that hardship come, we see some great Australian spirit too, and I've seen that in spades today. I'm very happy to take any questions. Well, we're standing ready to work with the state government. The way our natural disaster arrangements work is the state government uh, makes requests of us and we respond to those requests. Uh, we've given a big tick to every request we've received so far and we'll keep working with the state government. But you can't count the cost in infrastructure until the flood waters subside. It's just not possible to get a you know good account of the damage until you know what's under the flood waters for roads and bridges and other infrastructure. How did you, how did you feel when you saw the extent of flooding? Look, I've uh, unfortunately, as Prime Minister, had opportunity to see too many homes that have flooded. Uh, getting to see it from the air gives you a really good sense of the impact. And when you see a house that's got flood waters up to the eaves, then you just know the damage that's been done inside that home is truly devastating. Uh, so for people, when they're able to get back to those homes and start the clean up, it's going to be a very heartbreaking time. And I know too from visiting communities uh, months after flood the hit uh, that it's often when the initial event is over, when a lot of the TV cameras have gone away and the media's attention has understandably gone elsewhere in the nation to other issues, that it's at that time that it really hits home and it's hard to people. So this is the start of what is going to be.